For the life of me, I have no idea what to think of anymore as a Manchester United fan. Genuinely, the reaction to that game against Brighton has been staggering beyond belief. And I'm not just talking about the frustrations uh, with the football and everything that's happened there. But Marco Arnautovic and Adrian Rabio, are you mad? There has been no long-term planning in either of these two names. It is pure, all hands on deck, panicking from Manchester United at the moment. When news broke on Monday morning from David Ornstein that Manchester United were working on a deal to sign Adrian Rabiot from Juventus, we all looked there and went, huh? Where's that come from? That makes no sense whatsoever. And now, only a few hours later, Reports from Sky Sports, reports from Fabrizio Romano uh, and Jamie Jackson in The Guardian and Samuel Luckhurst in the Manchester Evening News that Man United have agreed a deal to sign Adrian Rabiot from Juventus. Let's run through this article here in The Guardian, as I say, from Jamie Jackson and Fabrizio Romano. Manchester United have reached an agreement to sign Rabiot for an initial £15 million. One five. One five million pounds for Rabiot. Man United have reached an agreement to sign Rabiot for initial 15 million. Discussions are at an early stage, uh, but they're not expected to be that much of an issue, apart from the fact that his mum is his agent, and that is a massive, massive, massive issue. This is uh, staggering. Doesn't I, I? I don't know the superlative to describe what we're witnessing on this chaotic Monday with Fabrizio Romano separately. Uh, just he, I was I could do a separate video on that. Apparently. Sesco is going to be going to RB Leipzig and that deal is going to be agreed this week. But I just want to focus on this, on the madness here of the Adrian Rabio situation because it's, it's taken me by surprise. I think it's taken every single one of you by surprise. And isn't it amazing how quickly Manchester United can get a deal done for a player when the transfer fee is less than 20 million? Isn't it amazing? How long Manchester United will haggle and haggle and haggle and haggle and haggle and haggle over the price of a player? Unless you're, unless you're worth the 20 million, yeah, yeah, come, my friend. No problems. No questions asked. We've got you covered. I'm saying that with a smile on my face, but Jesus Christ, that hurts inside what we're seeing here in a summer where there was genuine, genuine reason to have optimism about the future at Manchester United with a coach, I, an actual genuine top-level coach who, who has ambitions to be the best in the world. He's now managing our football club and, and will improve these players. And you're going out and you're signing Adrian Rabiot. Now, in isolation, on its own, not as a direct consequence to this game against Brighton, Adrian Rabiot, you could argue about him being a decent squad signing. 27. That's about as far as I can go in terms of positives on Rabio. It's madness that we're going after him. It really is. Because all along we've heard the fact that uh, De Jong is plan A, B and C and D and there is no alternative really. And then the day after we lose to Brighton, we're agreeing a £15 million upfront fee for Rabio with Juventus. And this is in the same summer, of course. The Fabian Ruiz, he's going to be moving to, to PSG from Napoli. And the reports we're seeing are somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 million euros. Same summer that Yves Basuma has gone from Brighton to Spurs. Same summer that Bubakar Kamara went to Aston Villa on a free transfer. The same summer, there are quite literally 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 plus more than that midfielders I could say to you would be a better fit and a better choice for Manchester United than Adrian Rabiot. And this in particular angers me. We've seen reports all summer long that Manchester United, we're doing more checks now and balances than previously. And it claims that the club have walked away from at least four targets in that period after deeper research on their background, raised red flags. Where the hell was that research when it comes to Marco Arnautovic? And where the hell was that research when it comes to Adrian Rabio? This is a man 
Eric Ten Hag, who is known as a disciplinarian. He is known, what? He kicked someone out of the first team who was going to play in the preseason tour because they turned up late twice. Adrian Rabio, you want to do a bit? Well, how about I do a little bit of deeper research for you, Manchester United? How about that? This article written in 2018, I believe it was, on Bleacher Report. For a player still three months shy of his 24th birthday, Rabio has already racked up enough controversies to fill an entire career. Take the time he turned down a new contract at PSG and agreed to join Roma, only to change his mind a few months later. All the time he missed the French final after turning up late to a team meeting. Or when he annoyed PSG coach Blanc by revealing he had told the president to loan him out if his playing time dropped. And this is a man who is literally managed by his mother. Quote and quote down there. Always close to her son. Veronique has been criticised for several controversial moments that have taken place during his career. Also serving as his agent, he, she has been criticised for her attitude towards coaches, clubs and media, as well as her influence on her son's decisions. We do a bit of background research, do we? You look for red flags. There's like four fucking sirens going off for Adrian Rabio. It's nothing more than an attempt by Manchester United to clamour for a midfielder in the wake of a smashing at the hands of Brighton. Adrian Rabiot would have been nowhere near any list of Eric Ten Hag's. If we look at how Eric Ten Hag has been operating so far this summer, because we haven't got a scouting department that he can trust, he's been going after former Ajax players, Dutch players, people who have played in the Eredivisie. Players that he, he knows he can make his own judgment call on. So let's have a quick look at Adrian Rabiot's history. Oh yeah, he's played in fucking France and Italy his whole career. Has absolutely nothing to do with the Eredivisie. Eric Ten Hag's not managed him before. And the only reason why he's going to be on that list, why Manchester United right there have agreed a cut price deal for him is because he's got 12 months left on his contract and is a cheap alternative. And I'm just, I'm not stacked. Again, I don't know the right... I don't know the right word to use to describe this unfolding situation. But Adrian Rabio is not part of any, any long-term plan. Adrian Rabio is in nowhere near a top 10 list of midfielders that Eric Ten Hag would have drawn up. Sure, he's better than McTominay. Sure, he's going to probably improve our midfield options. But he's not going to move the needle. He's not going to change this team. He's just going to be another one of those players who plays okay one week and absolutely cack the next. Is stuck in frustration and clearly somebody who loves a controversy or two. Underneath a man in Eric Ten Hag who is a disciplinarian and will not settle for any shit. It's like what you're trying to do to Eric Ten Hag, Man United. Seriously. You're trying to make it as difficult as possible for him. Because bringing in someone like Adrian Rabio. With his agent being his mother, as I said in the live stream this morning. Mothers love their sons unconditionally, even if they're the biggest assholes in the world. And they will refuse to think that their son has done anything wrong. Trust me, I've got experience. My mum loved me and I was a bit of a dick. I'm not a dick anymore. And they want to work with him, with her. And that's what Eric Ten Hag needs. No, it's not. This is a pure and utter panic. Pure panic by Manchester United. And this, or this summer transfer window, I've, I've, I've reiterated from day one that I thought that we would be happy come the end of this transfer window. I felt like United were doing the right things because I felt Malasia, Eriksen and, and, and Martinez, I understood the logic behind them all. I can, see the, I can see the planning and I can see how they slot into that puzzle. Good luck trying to fit Rabio into any sort of semblance of a long-term plan. And the same goes for Arnautovic. Both of them huge red flags in the idea that Manchester United, we've been doing our background checks. Are we? Fuck. No chances any background checks been done. That is two panic buys. And after a preseason of so much optimism, a genuinely feeling we've got a coach who does it properly and a few, a few encouraging signings, it's all quickly unravelling. And Manchester United are really getting exposed again in the transfer market. Who could possibly have predicted that John Murto, 
decided to take all the transfers on himself and not bring in a specialist, a la Paul Mitchell or someone of his ilk, that it might cause problems this summer. You're witnessing it now.